Okay, I'm pretty sure we all have things to kind of discuss and talk about. So let's start here. Um, my, Dr. Dr. Rasevi, Rasevi uh, wasn't at our last meeting, so um, she's going to introduce herself, talk about what she does, and, um, and then we'll have, I think, Shu Long introduce herself because she was also absent. So, Dr. Rai Savvy, you're muted. Let's, let's unmute you. Help. My apologies. That would help if I unmuted myself first. So, hello, everyone. I'm Monica Rishabi. So, please call me Monica. Dr. Rishabi is super formal. So, please don't feel you need to do that. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at Penn State University, which is how I know Jason. And um, in my full time work, I'm the instructional technology coordinator at Goldie Beacom College. We're a small 1,400 full time equivalent private business college in Delaware. Um, we've been around for the last 100 plus years, actually. So, long history there. Um, I live across the street from where I now work, which is a really <laughs> nice thing. It's very cool. I commuted for three and a half hours for three years to Penn State. So being across the street is a welcome change. So it's a little bit about me, and I'm really excited to work with everyone. Fantastic. All right. And Shu Long. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shu Long Yan. And I'm from Penn State as well, and I'm working with Jason. And um, what else should I say? <laughs> uh, I um, I don't have directly instruct a lot of instructional design experience, but um, for my master, I work in the part time in different K to twelve settings, and so my background is more about. K to 12 education. So, yep. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you for that. So let's start here. I'm going to um, share my screen. Um, I guess that's kind of just the best way to, so everyone can look at the same thing. You know? mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm going to pull up the agenda and we're just going to go through it here. How to find the design template and what it entails. So, one of the questions that I had was, was where, where's the design template um, for our next assignment? And so I'm just gonna walk you through that here. On the main webpage, you just go to projects um, here. <clears throat> and then section three. And at the bottom of section three, we have a very brief description of what the units are and what they entail. But this just gives us an overview. And what we have in here are the um, assessment guidelines and the standards for each section. But then I believe it is section five. Yep, section five. The deliverables. Yeah. This is where we have our eight step process right we have the purpose this is this is what we're turning in february 23rd am i right about that date mm -hmm. jen right i think it's february 23rd uh, oh, yeah right, right 23rd or 26th i'm just um, let me look it up while you're talking go ahead okay great so right here this is what you're going to turn in as a prototype you know what what are we doing is the question now, this is what it is section one we want to identify what the purpose of the lesson is that you're creating and the questions that you're going to ask are what is the topic, who's the target audience, why are the learners taking this course, uh, what will be covered throughout this lesson. That's in your first section. Then in your second session section, we have the audience description. Right? You're going to really describe who the learners are. Down here at the bottom here, it says Kim, Courtney, and Bonnie can help us by sharing information about who the learners are. So that's why they're here for us and we can ask them particular questions directly. These things are also, however, listed back in the other section that we saw where it says who the learners are. So you can find it in both places. Section three, the course scope. And it tells us what it is that you're looking for based on um, the GED testing service performance standards, the GED testing service assessment guide. So this is a very, very, very important piece in here because it tells us what we are 
teaching towards or what our design or instructional design plan will be geared toward. These will give us all of our objectives. And then in section four, we've got our major course objectives. Okay, identify what those are for your particular lesson. Section five is the learning engagement appropriate approaches. How are you going to engage the learners through your online um, instructional material? We'll give a description about that. Review Merrill's first principles. Gagne is a C. I think this gets us on the same page with the language that we're using. Okay, because we're talking about Merrill, we're talking about Gagne, and here's a link here to those things. Section six, the learner assessment approaches. How are we thinking about assessing these students? After they finish using our instructional material, how do we think we're going to assess them? What are some ideas that we have? What instructional media are we going to use? What tools are we going to use? What tools are we going to have them use or expect them to be able to use and navigate? And we need to have a thorough, I think, thought process of how that's going to look. I think you really need to take yourself and put yourself into the learner's shoes at this stage here because you have to really understand what they're able to do and what they're not able to do. Um, before we start giving them the latest and the greatest. And then section eight here is talking about your course structure and sequencing. How the content and instructional activities will be sequenced, how and when the learners will engage in active practice and reflection, how, will, when, how and when learner assessment will occur, how and when feedback and guidance will be offered. So again, the link to these eight sections that should be included and thought through and thoroughly articulated um, and will be due February 23rd. Right, Jen? That's perfect. And you know what, Jason, if you keep yes. scrolling down just a titch more, um, it might be helpful. We didn't do this last semester, um, but I put it together already. The, the evaluation, what, what will happen is once you submit this, We'll have a round of evaluation where Kim, Courtney, Bonnie will look at things. I will look at things, Jason, everybody on the, you know, the facilitators. And then we also ask students to do a peer-to-peer -peer review as well. And so the way that's conducted, we use SurveyMonkey. So Jason, I don't know if you want to just click on that link. Sure. Um, but this um, will give you a sense for the types of things we'll be looking at within your design plans. They completely follow that list that Jason just went through in terms of the eight sections. Um, but it might give you a little bit better understanding of the types of things we'll be looking for and how we'll be offering you feedback based on what you present in your written document. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Jen. This is great. Hey, hey this is Hannah. Sure. Hey. Hello. How's, hi, how's everybody doing? Doing well. Hi. So, um, last Sunday, after a difficult time trying to find a good time for our team to meet, myself, Holly, and Shulon, we met last uh, Sunday. We used Zoom, uh, the free trial. Uh, yeah, and that was really, it worked well for us. I think there were some difficult, um, technical difficulties that we overcame. But I would like to share, and I don't know if that's something um, that I can get feedback on is we uh, during my studies we've done an instructional design project and there were some templates that we've used that I thought might be helpful to use within that design plan and I would like to share those with you and get your feedback as uh, facilitators on that that'd be great okay so how can I share that let's see so um I think you can share your screen, hopefully. Let's okay. see. So if I stop sharing my screen, then you can share your screen. Is that something we want to do right now? Do you think that we should do that? that I mean, that's what, that's what this is about anyway. Sure. So cool. okay. yeah. that's fine. So what section are you working on? Um, all of them. So let me show you the templates because there's three templates. The one okay. is, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is give you hosting, hopefully. Maybe that's what I need to do. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I, I did it easily with. Hmm. 
Can Hannah just click on, on my screen again? I'm a host. It just says share screen. Is that something maybe she can initiate on her on the bottom? Maybe. Do you have that option at the bottom? Do you see share screen at the bottom? Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So everyone can do it. Good. All right. All right. So share screen. Oh. All right. Oh. Yes. Okay. So you, you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So. Um, And so that's the beginning of our design plan, but I want to scroll down here to try to press page down. Okay, so the first template is an instructional design uh, delivery setting, and it might not be in the right section of the design plan but there were some questions that were given to us to help uh, to help us go through you know the instructional delivery setting and i thought they could be of some help to uh, some of us who maybe don't have that experience i found them very helpful when i did my instructional design project and uh, these are the questions so expected level of cooperation among learners some of these might not be applicable to this i didn't get the chance to go through each question to see mm -hmm. How applicable it is to our um, um, to this particular project. Um, it's an expected level of instructor support for learning during instruction. So that's maybe something we need to think through. And I wanted to get your feedback on how appropriate for us to use this within the design plan. So that's one. The other one that um, I thought when I did that project was really is a learner analysis and I know there's a big emphasis in the project right on understanding the learners and so um, it kind of asks you a bunch of questions about the learners what their prior credentials are their prior knowledge skills common errors learners when they first perform a task to be taught so and the demographics their age, their gender, if applicable. So that's another template that we've used that I wanted to share with everyone here. Hopefully you will find it useful. And if that's not something you want us to look at, you know, to use within this project, I want to know because I don't want to be spending too much time on it. And the last one, the last four sections of the design plan are grouped on this template that is called a course course blueprint so for so it lists the objectives objective one but then for every objective what's the performance assessment what's the learning teaching activities how is the learner going to be engaged within that objective what's the media what's the duration um, that was also very helpful for, for, for me when I did that other project um, is to break down you know every objective and then to have that visual template to tie assessment engagement media per objective so uh, that's that's it so it can, you can have as many objectives and you need for you know for your project uh, this is just the template uh, so yeah so I just wanted to get feedback from you as facilitator about this template and how appropriate it is to actually incorporate it in the design plan. Yeah, no, I think um, being someone who we, you know, we and Bonnie and Kim and Courtney can certainly help me with this. Where we started working on this project back in the spring, this is exactly the type of thing that I was so excited to have people from multiple institutions coming. This is Jennifer, by the way, <laughs> coming together <laughs> to be able to share what your best practices are. And this is fantastic. And I really appreciate the way you're doing it by taking. The material that you have used in a course or in prior uh, experiences and, and then embedding it within ours because as I said it is it, we do appreciate everybody keeping to the eight sections in general because that's how we're going to be able to give consistent feedback to everybody it's more of kind of an administrative thing for the evaluation piece of it but as far as what you include within each section if you feel you're to the point within your group to be able to do what you're laying out here um, I would consider that for most groups to be pretty aggressive at this point um, of where you, most people probably are. If you're at this point and this makes sense to your group and this is how you like to, you know, to get to this uh, granularity uh, in terms of detail in your lesson, more power to you. Um, that's my personal opinion and I'll certainly let Kim, Courtney, and Bonnie and, and others who will be doing the evaluation add their feedback as well. But um, I think it's fantastic if you, if you want to take it to that level. Mm -hmm. 
I did note in my, this is Bonnie, uh, and I, uh, I, Hannah, I think you're the one that it, uh, is at Oakland University as part of your doctorate program? Uh, yes, master's program. Oh, master's, okay. Yeah. Um, and so you're in the area where I live. I live in Oakland County. Um, but this, this kind of blueprint is one that definitely uh, uh, I used uh, with corporate and academic clients. Uh, but as Jennifer says, it does take a level of, of design skill. Uh, but it certainly can give a, a you know specificity to what is going to be actually designed. And it was something that our clients certainly um, appreciated. Uh, I think what Jennifer is, is uh, saying is that it, it, it's difficult for those who have not been in instructional design for very long or just taking some classes to go to this level. I, th I, I would love to see your group do it. Okay, thanks for the feedback. Mm -hmm. Kim or Courtney, do you have any feedback in terms of this? Um, and, and would this be helpful for you? Because I know it's really important for you to read these and be able to give us feedback. And, and obviously, the more detail we can give you, <laughs> the more feedback you can give us. Um, for, this is Kim. From my perspective, I probably would want to just take a look at it in more detail. Uh, you know. In, if Bonnie says it's good, then we usually say it's good. <laughs> well, one of the things that is very appropriate to this kind of blueprint uh, is that uh, the performance assessment is attached to an objective. Oftentimes, what can happen with uh, designers is that they can state three or four objectives, and then you can have all kinds of instructions, but you don't see where the assessment takes place because they they often forget that. And so uh, the performance assessment, I would even advise uh, Hannah and the team that the performance assessment can also be the practice. So it can be the performance assessment that is, if I were in an academic setting, it would be the performance assessment that is both practice and that which is graded. But it is excellent to be able to attach an objective to how it will be assessed. Not just how it will be taught, but how it will be assessed. I'm in agreement with that. So, I mean, th this, is, this is fantastic in my, in my personal opinion. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to add to what everyone else has said about it, uh, except the fact that this is, it's, it's, it's more complete, it's more robust um, in terms of the detail that you're giving. So exactly what you said, we often write these objectives and we don't, we don't match the assessments with the objectives and it's clearly stated here. And I like, I like how it's forefronted here. We've got our objectives uh, directly on the front end and then our assessments directly next to it. So we can see direct alignment between the two. And so mm -hmm. I, in terms of assessing for us, you know, like Jen said, we have those eight markers that we're looking at and looking for and we really like the fact that we can be creative and allow that flexibility to be creative and that's why this session is important for you for you to show this to us and say oh that's great this is along the lines of, of what will complete you know mark off all those checkpoints but how you orchestrate that is is kind of up to you i think i'm pretty flexible with how that how that looks as long as it's it's legible it's neat and it's orderly uh for me personally but i wanted to hear from from Jen, what Jen and, and the client had to say first before I and I, I would I would add Hannah that one of the things that uh, uh, that we did with clients I, I worked with automotive clients in on in the corporate level and then academic we uh, uh, developed classes is that um, sometimes people think the assessment is only that which is cumulative or the terminal right. assessment and assessment need designers certainly need to understand that how the student is processing that information and processing that learning building blocks and so we could call those enabling objectives or whatever but just building if, if, if you as a designer recognize that the students need to be building and that that practice so practice can be almost as equally if even if not more so important as terminal assessment okay thank you very much for the feedback 
Uh, okay, so let me stop sharing here and give this control back to you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, just to uh, Dr. I'm sorry, what's the first name of Dr. Shona? Bon Bonnie. 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 All right. So maybe, maybe Bonnie, since we're in the same area, maybe we'll find time where we can personally meet one of these days. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. okay. So I'm going to return back to so our little guide here, and and I don't know if we're. we're at, okay, everyone. I think we've all seen this before. Deliverables are, are right in here, and we just went over those. The assessments are here. Form and standards are here. The style guides are all in here. So, I mean, I think we should move on to another group. How about that? And, and just talk about what it is that you're thinking and you're doing. Um, I think that's what this is about. So let's move there. Let's move to that um, next step. I know that. Let's talk about my group then. My group, uh, Willette and Caroline and Elaine, and I don't know if Elaine, I didn't see Elaine's name here. Nope, but we have Willette though. Did you guys, you guys met, right, Willette? There was a meeting on Sunday, okay. the group met on Sunday. Great. Um, I was oh. not um, at the meeting. I missed the confirmation email, so I wasn't there. Okay. Um, but the um, design document has been shared. Okay. Um, one um, idea or one question I had was uh, whether it would be possible to administer uh, an entry skills test to the learners. Uh, there was a lot of information provided on the learners in the Jumpstart orientation materials, but I wanted to know if it was possible um, to get some information on the, on the current learners by way of the future skills test. Kim, do you want to take a, or Kim or Courtney, um, did you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I don't understand the question, probably because I don't know what what interest uh, right yeah <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to come down to our non-designer level explain that a little bit please <laughs> sure it's a, it's a test that can be uh given to learners to determine what their prior knowledge level is and it's uh, used to determine at what level to start the instruction um so it's just a way of seeing what the learners already know what they already know specifically about scientific method? Well, about math. I'm, I'm in the math group, so. Oh, you're in the math or, group. I'm or sorry. Or it can be used for any group, but uh, as it relates to math for my group, uh, it will be. Okay. Um, Kim? Yeah, go ahead. Kim, don't you already administer um, a, a, a test to your, to your students uh, to determine where they are? We do, and it's the um, it's called the TABE test, T A B E, and that's the test of adult based basic education. I, I would say, you know, we can we can pretty much generalize, and Courtney, jump in if you if you want to. Um, I would say generally they're at a sixth grade level. Okay. Some maybe a little bit more, um, and and I'm not even sure that would be sixth grade with today's Common Core standards. So um, you can assume that they understand the basics of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And other than that, I would not assume that they understand anything more than that. those basics. Would you agree, Courtney? Yes, I agree with that. And, and uh, well, that, uh, I think another thing that factor that you need to consider is that the students that are currently in the program may not be the students that are going to use this uh, module in uh, let's say September when when everything gets smoothed out and, and finalized so uh, you have to you have to take the general that Kim and Courtney have uh, have uh, identified understood thank you you know, the other thing, too, um, Willette, is that we may have someone come in 
that assesses at a 10th grade level and we wouldn't even at that point have them go through this module um, so this is really for our very basic learner um, that's probably knows what a fraction is mm -hmm. but doesn't understand the concept of adding subtracting multiplying and dividing fractions okay does that help at all that was very helpful thank you yes okay is there anything else that we can clarify with that um not at this time that was okay that made it clear all those comments thank you okay and you can always you know send us some some more questions if you need to yeah. we're open to that okay thank you something to consider i was just going to add this is monica um as you're building your activities and thinking about your assessments and so forth um, you may want to consider scaffolding the difficulty level. So in other words, if you have the interest in mind to have this meet a wide variety of learners, having the understanding that we're looking at basic math level skills, et cetera, you can still offer some different assessment opportunities to try to personalize it a little bit. So that way, whoever is giving this can choose the most appropriate assessment that would work for the students that they have at the time. So it just kind of extends the longevity and relevancy of what you create. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that we had said um, early on was that if you can start with multiplication and division, they tend to pick that concept up easier. And then if you move on to addition and subtraction because they have to find, um, you know, common denominator and then they have to reduce and that, that seems to be a little bit more difficult for them to learn. Okay. Courtney, did you have anything to add to that? Nope, I think you got it. Okay. Uh, I, I would add. I would add, based on conversations with you, Kim and, and uh, Courtney, is that uh, math problems uh, need to also have a relevance to adult lives, uh, okay. and not just not just numbers on a page, because they had that in school, and that didn't. Uh, you know resonate with them and so these adults have had real life experience and so when it comes to multiplication or division it has to do with things that they would have to do in in everyday life you know that's a good point too um well uh, you want to make sure that your group um focuses especially when you get to the practice part of um making sure that in there there are some two-step word problems okay. so they can usually grab on to understanding straight math a little bit easier I call it straight math that's certainly not a technical term but if I just put you know one half plus one quarter they they can they can do that straight math but then putting into a word problem where they have multiple steps to do is is usually where that trips them up when they get to the test part. Okay, so I'll make sure there's some uh, word problem instruction along with word problem practice. Yeah, and to Bonnie's point, remember that we're doing this with an adult learner. So you would want to do, um, you know, something to do with, I don't even know, like you have a, a quarter of a, a quarter of a quart of oil and you have to add a half a quart more Mm -hmm. You know, to, in order to be at full in your car. Yeah, that kind something of like that. Yeah. Makes sense. I now, think uh, another thing, well, that is that uh, uh, will help students uh, based on the learning theory uh, aspect is before they have to actually do a word problem, you could mm -hmm. give them a model word problem. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is, but a model word problem in which you show a worked solution oh, yeah. and then give them the practice to do it themselves because the research does indicate, especially with the learners that are having that that need this kind of step by step that uh, mm -hmm. work solution and, and partially work solutions uh, give them a greater uh, ability to grasp the problem. Yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. I remember reading that in the literature on um, worked examples. Um, it's, I'm, I've made a note of it to include that. Worked examples are uh, powerful teaching tools. Thank you so much for that, Bonnie. 
for the good of the order inside of the um, chat we have a, a question are the are the students going to be working individually one-on-one -on -one with a tutor and Courtney has answered that independently sometimes they have individual tutors working with them but they don't ever really work in groups so they work independently I think Courtney and I almost wrote verbatim the same thing <laughs> within one minute of each other. So. Mm -hmm. Great. We're in sync. So fantastic. Okay, how about the third group? Hi, Fern. Wonderful. Uh, the third group is a social studies group. So we, we went through the, the science group with some questions. We went through the math group. Mm -hmm. Blood had some great questions. How about the social studies group with... Um, I, I think we only have... This is Paige. How are you doing, Paige? I think we have Alexa on here. Um, it looks like our other members are missing, so I'm going to be taking notes for them. I do have an email. Um, <laughs> If Alexa doesn't cover everything that they were concerned about, that I can read um, their concerns, and maybe um, Courtney and Bonnie and all of you guys can kind of respond to it, and I'll just tell them to go back and watch the recording. Mm -hmm. So, Alexa, do you have? Yep. Okay, girl. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How are you? Okay. Now, I I missed the. I was not at the uh, the meeting that they had on Sunday. Um. So, um, what they sent Paige is the question that they have in terms of there's, there's a lot of information in the social studies section. Um, and, you know, they're concerned about the time frame that we have to get it finished. Um, so that's, that's the main thing that from the notes that I got from them that they're concerned about. Are, are you con oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Are you concerned about the amount of time that you have to finish it or that my students that one hour the one hour you know what go over if you need to we're fine with that okay okay, okay. also um i we came up with this unit because we have um, one of our ged textbooks um mm -hmm. that kind of came up with this idea of a very broad review of um, history and mm -hmm. it's just a couple pages long um and so I was comparing that to the target assessments that the GED testing service put out and they mm -hmm. didn't quite cover everything. And I think some things need um, a little bit of expansion. Would it help you if I sent you a copy of that? So you can kind of see where I was coming yeah. from, what they did. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I will send that to you guys. Yes. I think that would, that, that would help um, a lot. Yeah. Okay. Because if you look at it, I mean, it, 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 it's a lot of, it's a lot to cover. Yes, it is. It um, is. So we don't need. We don't need it to be too granular. You know, we don't. We don't need anything where you're telling the president's names during that time or anything. Anything like that. Um, it is just kind of an overview um, that that we need to have. But we have to assume that they. You know, things like you know, why did we get into a war? What was the tipping okay. point why we got into World War I or World War II, you know, kind of what was generally going on then, and then what was the United States, you know, reason for getting into that war? Okay. So when we're going into things like the, the treaties and uh, um, the War of 1812, we're just going over an overview and not getting, like, you know, really – like you said, granular with it. No, not at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And um, Kim, okay. I think in a prior session when we were having a similar discussion, I think we were doing a World War II module or something like that, you said it's very helpful for the students also to have timelines. Is that right? To get an understanding of when certain things fall within historically within um, within a timeline. Is that, would that be appropriate? Okay. Yeah, about that's yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll look at incorporating timelines um, for, you know, certain events like World War One or World War Two. We can do a timeline for that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and you know, any questions that you have, please feel free to reach out to either Courtney or I and or both of us. And, you know, if you say, is this being too specific, we can just send you a quick email back to cover that. Okay. That's, and, that's and great. You know what, Will? Will at this is that this is, or not? Will at I'm sorry. I'm like looking at my screen. Um, an, another thought um, uh, I had is like literally pick your battle, like pun intended. But um, <laughs> you know, like even though Kim said do as much as you can, you know, we we totally appreciate you guys signed up for X amount of time to volunteer. So mm -hmm. we would rather have you do a really fine job on a discreet section of whatever you choose to do and then let us know what that's going to be rather than have something that's so watered down that it's not okay. any more helpful than just you know going to Wikipedia for something for a student so you know we okay. I, as bigger picture you know if, if there's you know obviously we, this is a huge nut to crack for what you're talking about right. so um, if you do need so, to draw boundaries around it you know make that decision and okay send you a list of what we're gonna cover and then you could tell, and then you guys could say, okay, you know, you need to add this or take out this. Yeah. Would that be helpful? Yeah, that, okay. that would be that would be great. You know, the okay. other thing is um, when Jennifer just brought up Wikipedia, you can. Mm -hmm. I, I I do not mind at all if you put on a slide. If you want to find out more information about this, click on this link, and it would take yeah. you to an overview at Wikipedia, yeah. or it would take yeah. you maybe even to uh, a video on the History Channel or something like Got that. It. it doesn't have okay. to be explained all in detail because all they may look detail. at something okay. and, say, and say, "Yeah, you know, I I kind of do know a lot about World War One. This was a great refresher. This one slide." And somebody may uh -huh. say, gosh, I don't get it at all, and I want to know more about it. So right. I, I think that would be a good, you know, that would be you know, a good thing, too, is to kind of give a brief overview and then have something where if they wanted to go further, they could. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'll relay that to my teammates. Um, uh, I think the guidance that you guys just gave us uh, will, will uh, really ease their minds. Okay, um, uh, yeah, I, one of the things that, that Kim has mentioned and, uh, and Jennifer is that uh, the quality of the instruction and the amount of practice that you give the students, students can have, will be presented with information all over the place. So uh, even okay. though Kim has said it's an overview, you need, you'll want to make sure that you work in a type of practice and an application, even though it's history. So that might mean okay. that a review where they have to answer some questions connected Talk to the questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fill in the blanks and stuff like right. that. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I think so, Kim. Don't, don't, they're going to need to uh, re have these things re, uh, you know, repeated in their in their minds, so that they're not just reading and then reading. So they need right. to practice something. Okay. That, yes, I agree. I agree. That's fine. And, and I was talking to another group. Um, actually, um, well, maybe what is this? Uh, I was talking to Wendy. I think it was. And a, a lot of times, it helped in the past when students were trying to um, refine their scope and figure out what, how they're going to take this big chunk of content and, and drill it down. If you do really drill down on how the students are assessed on the GED, pretty quickly you see, you know, where where the GED is focusing um, right. and the types of questions that they they'd be asked, and it kind of helps you as a designer right. to narrow your focus a little bit. Okay. That's a, that's a very good point, Jennifer, because you'll notice things like they may not ask um, a specific thing about uh, World War II, but they might show um, a, a map of uh, Europe and they may have certain things shaded in there and mm -hmm. say, you know, based on this, did the Allies gain ground during this time or something like that. Okay. Yep. Uh, will it ask a question about using Captivate? So Jennifer, uh, uh, she's wondering about using it for, um, uh, I guess, making an interaction. It, sure. it, yeah, and I think, in my opinion, and again, I, you know, I'm one person, but um, along the lines of what Kim was saying, we consider the template, the PowerPoint template, to be your right. launch pad. 
So right. if, you, if you create something in Captivate, as long as we're able to um, access it and it's not something yeah. that's locked down in some proprietary you know, right. uh, thing. Because with Captivate, you can turn it into a PDF that's interactive. Yep. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah, and so, it can and and it can be imported into the PowerPoint, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. You, the PowerPoint, right? The, the PowerPoint can be imported into the Captivate, and then you can you can build around it. Uh, okay. So you wait. Can, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Then is is mm -hmm. that if 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 the clients do not have Captivate, are they going? They don't to be, have to. They don't have to. No, wait, well, let, me, let me ask the question. Is okay, I'm sorry. If, if they need to um, uh, edit or, or modify. Mm -hmm. Oh, then that's a, the, yeah, if they need to edit or modify it, uh, they would have to have Captivate um, to modify it. That, um, so, yeah, so, so that, that, has, that historically has been our issue, and that's unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately why we, Kind of keep coming back to the lowest common common denominator of PowerPoint yeah. is we have that issue of, and it happens all the time. Uh, it's happened to us several times where we have a group get to a certain point, and then another student group will take over from there. Yeah. And so that's um, uh, you know what, why we've kind of like I said ended yeah. up with PowerPoint. But I, yeah, I, I mean, PowerPoint, if you PowerPoint have, okay. does have a lot of capabilities of being able to import, uh, you know, whether it's a, a, an already created piece and you import it to use it within the PowerPoint. And having PowerPoint go in to captivate is a whole different, uh, you know, method. And but something I would suggest yeah. if you're looking for something interactive, so I'm not sure what your kind of, I guess, end game was with why you wanted to use Captivate, but if you're looking for interactivity, you're looking for quizzing, you're looking for some SCORM compliant options, then I would highly suggest checking out Office Mix. Office Mix is a free plugin to PowerPoint. Okay, uh, Office so, Mix. Office Mix. Um, it's something okay. I'm launching right now. Office with faculty. Mix. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a really great solution. Um, the Office Mix Twitter team is actually very active. So if you have questions, you can just tweet to Office Mix um, individuals there. It's Microsoft Office. It's a plugin and it's free. Um, it's, I think, really going to give Captivate and Adobe Presenter a run for its okay. money in terms of e-learning. So okay. if you use something like that, it's not anything that someone wouldn't be able to edit later. It's great. essentially adding just another tab to your ribbon in PowerPoint. Yeah, great. Okay, my, my question with that is, is will, will you, is it just for um, Windows, uh, PowerPoint, uh, or can you use it on iOS, on, on, on the Mac operating system as well? Do they have a... That's a really good question. Um, yeah. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, knowing Microsoft, I'm going to say it's probably PC. Just knowing okay. how they do a lot of their um, different test things, they typically tend to do PC first. Definitely check okay. it out. I think it actually might be officemix.com, which you could bing or Google it. Um, but okay. I've had a lot of success with it and actually quit using Presenter and switched to it altogether. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and just to add to this, um, and I, I, I kind of going back to what I was saying, if you consider uh, PowerPoint to be our, you know, the, interface and then if you want to though go create a video and other students have done this in other right. groups which again is something mm -hmm. obviously I can't go in and edit someone's video after they've already produced right. it. Exactly. But if you right. small right. Of content if you feel that you can use Captivate or so whatever tool you have to do a short you know and also we appreciate you're using these for potentially for class projects and portfolios so we right. want to spread your wings a bit too so if there is a five minute some type of exercise that you want to try creating uh, in some other tool than PowerPoint, and then simply store it somewhere and link to it, or let us have the uh, the file so we're able to you know keep the original. Right. Um, that's fine too. But let's let's yes. kind of keep that common denominator of everything originating from the PowerPoint that you link from or embed within the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. No, I I think that. Uh, about it for uh, what were um, the questions we had with the social studies group um, that I know of. The, the, the ladies did not uh, send me any other information in terms of questions that they had. So thank Great. you very much for the information and feedback, everybody. Fantastic. So we've hit all of the groups so far. Hopefully we've answered all of those questions and we have representation from all those groups so that at least we can go back and share for those that aren't here. So here's our next bit of business here is 
any questions or concerns from Grace Centers of Hope? No. No. <laughs> Great. You know what? You guys are awesome. Kim Very and Courtney, um, I came up, I was talking to Wendy on the phone or, um, last week. Are there, and it kind of came up, I know, on Paige's uh, group last year. Is there anything in particular that you currently use that you want us to try to replicate, enhance, uh, you know, anything that you really love on any of these three units, you know, please share that with us, um, you know, sooner than later, I guess. <laughs> but if there's anything in particular that you really um, want us to focus on in terms of whether it be a, a practice activity or um, whatever it may be, just, you know, feel free to, to share it with us. Uh, well, we'll have to think about that. I think we don't have anything that we love, and that's the reason that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, again, I'm going to base the comments just on some discussions that I've had with Kim and, and Courtney, is that uh, uh, as you work on the, your designs and, uh, and then begin to work out problems and and uh, both instruction and practice is that you may want uh, and maybe not just may you probably want to have other people look at it to make sure that it's clear to them and that it's accurate because uh, I mean I have a, a, and I think other people will agree I cannot edit my own work I cannot see where I've made an error in my own writing or in my own uh, addition and subtraction and so forth so it's really helpful to have somebody who is not working on this to take a look at it I think that's a great I think that's great I think if you have like a seventh grader around you <laughs> at least you're a nephew or somebody to take a look at it and see if that makes sense to them Any, anybody in middle school or higher? All right. Well, thank you. I think that was really, really good information. I'm trying to put all this into the notes here so that we can, we have a legacy for people to look at um, and check out later on. Okay. Well, good. I think that wraps it up. Unless anyone else has comments or concerns. Um, glad to see Monica was able to, to make, make it here and, and meet us and then Chu Long as well. And we had some great feedback and I think great conversation. And we're all on the same page. So that, that was kind of the point of this session. Let's remember that on Monday, our reflections are due. So let's not forget that. Our, reflect, our second reflections are due on Monday. And then I believe it will be the following week that following Monday, the design prototypes will be due for feedback. So if there are any other questions in between there, we have plenty of sources to get in touch with between um, Grace Centers of Hope for SME work, um, between ourselves as facilitators, myself, Paige, or Wendy, and especially your advisors between Dr. Rice-Savvy, or Monica, rather, um, Dr. Earnshaw, and Dr. You, I believe, is her name, right, Wendy? Is that right? Did I say that right? Did I? No, you're, you're muted. You got to unmute. <laughs> I'll send you a note. Dr. You is unable to attend tonight. Okay. Okay. I'll send you the, the reason. No problem. That. No problem. No problem. That. She wished she could have attended. Yeah. Well, that's why we have recorded and stuff. We know everyone gets busy. Yes. So, this is an extreme situation. I'll, I'll, send, I'll share it with you privately. Okay. No problem. So that's it for me. I've got to get to class, and I'm sure you guys got things to do. So if that is all, I think we're adjourned. I think we're good to go. So good luck to everybody. Please keep communicating and staying in touch. I'll let you know when the next session will be, but don't forget Monday our reflections are due. Jen, you got anything for us? Nope. I've got to get the question prompts up tomorrow <laughs> before they can answer them. So that will be up tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Okay, so this recording will be what you'll send it to me, I guess. Jim, yep, that sounds it? good. That sounds good. Okay, and then we'll get this right posted in here. So, all right, it's been fun. Take care, everybody. Have a nice night. All right. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. -bye.